Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to another trek through the dungeon. Uh, this is the continuing adventure of Arcanus the Destroyer, i.e. Arcanus the Deep Elf Wizard, whom I started and have been playing for a while. Uh, last we left off, I had made it to Lair and still had an unfortunate lack of spells, which was finally beginning to come around. I still got a bunch of non-fiery spells, though fire is what I'm eventually aiming for. And I had just made the discovery that if I wield the Staff of Conjurations, a lot of my spell powers go up by a reasonably large amount at this point, which is nice. Uh, why am I still carrying rotten chunks? Um, what else did I need to remember before I get started? Looks good, looks good. Oh yeah, Captain's Cutlass, right, and Resist Elect Swappable. Uh, layer 5, um, I have sufficiently powerful spells to kill elephants and death yaks, so I should be good for continuing. Let's pre-apply swiftness and get a imp by my side before I go down. Hopefully it, won't be, it was not in fact necessary, good. I'll switch to Captain's Cutlass and get working. Yeah, I generally am gonna probably keep the Cutlass on hand for a while because I just like it a lot. It's a fun weapon. Okay, that was a fire uh, wand. Definitely a good wand to have when my only spells deal poison and ice damage. It have the ability to deal damage of another type. Skill-wise, uh, charms is still at zero. I find this uh, unacceptable. Let's pump a little bit into charms. Just, you know, get it up a level or two. Oh, wow. Okay, I need to back away a step. But this is an amazing position for me because all those guys hiding in that in the middle there, yeah, they are all killable. Like I'm just gonna freeze cloud the whole area, and they're gonna suffer so much. I got them all killed. Uh, my charms just went up massively. Um, in fact, looking at my charm skills, most specifically swiftness, is the one I have my eye on the most. But Swiftness, Flight, and uh, Repel Missiles are all reasonably well-powered at this point. I'll level it up just a little bit more, but yeah, that, that was nice. Uh, I'm downplaying it, but right now I, I'm, ha I'm kind of really happy on the inside. That went fantastically well. It, it's basically like seeing a potion of experience sitting on the floor. Except not that much, not even close to that much experience, but you know, just the sheer massacre and the low risk to do it with. Other classes would have, you know, tried things like using um, wands to shoot at them for a long time, but I just have the exact spell. Oh! Here comes something to ruin my parade. I don't want to lose any scrolls to him, so I'm putting ice clouds so that his fire breath will get blocked. And, you know, ice damage probably will hurt him a lot, too. So, I win both ways. Alright. Ooh, new book. Dig! Dig! At last I find dig. Uh, how am I doing for spell levels total? Rather bad, unfortunately. Um, but again, don't forget, I have the ability to forget a bunch of spells. I have at least four amnesia scrolls, so that's not a big deal. Uh, I could pick up poison. I could really stand to pick up poison arrow before dig here, though, actually. What's my single target damage spell? I've been leaning on lightning bolt pretty hard for that. Um, upgrading to poison arrow would not be a bad idea. I can always lose some of the lesser stuffs that I've memorized, like, uh, well, it's all good, really. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Utility first. Dig is utility. Ah, but dig requires me to have transmutation and earth memor uh, worked up well. Earth will require counter training, which I will be spending a lot of EXP on if I go that route. So instead, I'm going to go for poison arrows. But I will be, you know, coming back eventually to get dig. In fact, what's this book got for me right now? Nothing of note, just ignite poison, which I'm probably never going to memorize at this point. Yeah, let's leave that behind. Okay, continuing to search. Uh, overall, actually, what letter did I assign that to? Poison arrow should be on high damage, so G. I generally use F as my second tier damage spell. G as my serious I want to kill you right now spell. So right now, lightning bolt should be F, yep. And 
poison arrow should be G. Um, and, uh, you know, the lettering I use, I have my own standardized system. Not because it's optimal in any way, just because it's what I'm used to. And I strongly recommend that when you play, you try to establish something that works for you. Uh, with You know, when you hit the point that you're consistently getting six plus spells, even just knowing what your early spell standard slots are is important. And of course, if you use macros, it's even more important. Like the uh, way I have Mephitic Cloud linked to my star key by making... And I'll show you guys, actually. My star key is capital Z lowercase c, so I always make sure my C spell is one that is an AoE that needs to be aimed, like Mephitic Cloud. Whereas my magic dart spell macroed is macroed to this key so that I do ZA period. It instantly fires at the first thing that it targets. Naturally, I would not want to put a spell that isn't a uh, general either cheap or a sure shot is single fire on my letter A, so I have to be more careful. Hmm. I have too much weight to want to drop things. Let's start dropping stuff I don't need, like the ring of teleport and because I have the ability to teleport four or five times without that. And, uh... I believe I'm dropping might, and I can already fly, so levitation is superfluous. Okay, let's go for it. It's because I'm finding all of these curing potions at this point. At this point, I have enough curing potions that I no longer need to be... need to be conservative with them. You know, it would be nice if I had the ability to be somebody who wasn't me, you know, somebody who wasn't always conservative with consumables, no matter what the genre of the game or what the situation. Okay, so far so good. Ooh, scroll of enchant weapon. Elephant slugs, you guys can't move. I'm just gonna bathe you in poison and then run away, and then when you finally escape the poison, I'm gonna put you in an ice cloud, and then I'm gonna attack you. So dead. Armor skill is very gradually helping my freezing cloud cast. Uh, it was seven, now it's six. Of course, my spell casting and conjurations are also contributing. But I really want to get armor all the way up to eight so that I eliminate the penalty. All right, charms of four is good for now. I'll worry about pumping more points into it when it becomes relevant again, if it becomes relevant again, or you know later in the game when I have the experience to burn. So it's not like I have to keep it higher than... It. As long as it's getting its job done, I'm happy. And at this point, it is clearly getting its job You know what? I don't need more remove curse. I have like eight of them. I have enough to uncurse every item individually. And it, and it happens to uncurse them all simultaneously, so that isn't even a necessary ability. Mm-hmm, come on. Okay, let's drop uh, enchant weapon and a whole bunch of remove curse scrolls. You know, as your big cloud damage or big AoE damage spells start coming online towards the mid late mid game, or late layer I should say, it's really interesting how much of a backseat Mephiti Cloud starts to take to your playstyle. Well, my playstyle. Um, as I'm far more likely to cast a spell that will kill my enemies than a spell that may disable them for a short time so that I can finish them off. Like, Mephiti Cloud, I would have had to, like, one by one pick them off and then dance with them and then hope that they didn't dance too hard because they're elephants. And we all know elephants have two left feet, which makes them terrible dancers. They also have two right feet, which you would think would help them balance, but not really. Sorry, I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. Um, but no, instead, uh, what ends up happening... Yeah, if I have a choice between that being a Mephiti Cloud or that being an Ice Cloud and the only difference is a trivial amount of extra spell hunger... I'm sorry, Mephitic Cloud just isn't as important. But 
the reason starting with Mephitic Cloud makes so much sense is because the point in the game where it starts to drop off in power and enemies become just, you know, too strong to, to reasonably take on with just a Mephitic Cloud, well, that point I usually have found other spells anyway. But starting the game with it, it's effective against pretty much everything. Um, and the things it's not effective against, uh, your Conjure Flame is. And that's not always true, but, you know, I'm, I'm speaking generically. So yeah, uh, totally a fan. It's a shame that I don't- I have zero interest in being an Ice Mage, because I really could have had a great start on that right now. I mean, I've got the Ring of Ice, I've been casually casting Ice Magic for quite a while. Since clouds can't spawn on clouds, as long as I'm standing in a poison cloud with resist poison, I never have to worry about either an enemy putting a cloud on me, or me putting a ice cloud in such a way that I will get hit by it. Also, it pushes clouds such that they fill out rooms or fill out areas quicker. Because, you know, you put one, then you put another adjacent to it, and it doesn't land in the same spot. Yeah, I'm treating Mephitic Cloud, an AoE 3x3, as a single target disable here. That's that's how irrelevant it's become to... or how unnecessary it's become. And thanks to Troll Leather, I can afford to tank a lot of damage and then just regenerate it back quickly. As opposed to, you know, oh crap, I lost 20 health, let me retreat to a safe spot to heal. You know, all the way back upstairs or something. And again, I, I gotta, gotta emphasize, this is something that people lose perspective on when they're talking about Crawl and thinking, oh, you have to get lucky. You don't really have to get lucky, it just helps. You know, if you give me luck and you give me better spells, I'm gonna use them. If you give me luck and give me less spells but more intelligence, I'm gonna use that so that I can spam my higher level stuff. If uh, you give me bad luck by giving me good spells when I'm in fact a melee class, I'm going to burn the books because I'm playing with Trog and get some piety. Uh, and then use that to spam Brothers in Arms a little bit more often than I would have to deal with one or two extra dangerous situations. Uh, no matter what, as long as you're picking strong starting classes and playing to win, as opposed to trying to challenge yourself or gimping your build somehow, you can turn many situations that are bad into okay, that are good into... New, uh, that are that are bad into okay, that are okay into good, etc, etc, etc. And yes, sometimes you wander into an instant death trap. But in hundreds and hundreds of games, I find that happens much, much more rarely than I do something which then leads to me being in a death trap and regret that I did thing X. Forget where I- oop. Enough chit chat. There is a Cato Blepas. This is a good chance to. Too late. I was gonna say something else. Well, I managed to ice him as well, so he's gonna take damage if he tries to approach me. And I'm waiting for him to do just that so that I can do this. I put poison on myself. He is no longer capable of casting Calcifying Dust on me because there is a. Oh crap, those dogs were behind. Let's ice the dogs. Uh, I'm not confident that the... Okay, cal Calcifying Dust, Calcifying Dust, Poison Gas, Poison Gas, Poison Gas, Dust. I'm cool. Um, I am also really hungry, so I'm gonna eat a Honeycomb while everything dies. And now I need to use a devastating single target attack. Let's go Poison Arrow against him. He needs to die immediately. Everything else here is negotiable. In fact, let's just go ahead and use the Mephitic Cloud because it's cheap to buy myself some time. And poison everything here so that they are all between rocks, hard places, and, and you know what I'm talking about. There we go. Situation cleared. I am free as a gay bird. Jay, jay bird. Free as a jay bird. Uh, 
Okay. I still have call imp, which I don't like, but whatever, I don't really need any of these, so I'm just gonna hang on to this book for now. It's a good idea to have a cheap summon that you can use to like, well, for example, if I could summon uh, five scorpions right now, that would block every pathway to approach me, and I could focus on just killing him with impunity. But, you know, I don't have summon scorpions, and it doesn't make a huge difference, because I'm dodgy and tanky enough that I can handle him. Uh, not tanky so much as dodgy. And with enough health that even if he hits me, I should be okay for a second or two. Uh, and I'm nuky enough that he won't get the chance. The beauty of the spells I'm using... Actually, I'll show you this. The beauty of the spells I'm using is Magic Dart cannot miss. It can be resisted and deal very little damage, however. <laughs> blink is Blink. Mephitic Cloud can be resisted and or... Uh, put, uh, the enemy can roll high enough to ignore it for a turn or two, like centaurs often do. Call Imp is an Imp, so no matter what, when I cast it, I got myself a mini meat shield, but he can blink around. How often have I used these spells compared to Lightning Bolt? Well, I guess Magic Dart I have, but it's also one mana. Lightning Bolt cannot miss. Poison Arrow cannot miss. Uh... Poison Cloud and Freezing Cloud absolutely cannot miss, because they're clouds, they just sit there. You either don't take damage from them, or if you're in them, you do. And so, in a situation like this, I can know with absolute certainty that if he walks into my zone, he will start taking damage immediately, and he will continue to do so until he leaves me alone, or he dies. And you know, if it's a poison zone, well, leaving me alone might still mean that he dies. Uh, I'm going to use a scroll of recharging ASAP on my Wand of Teleport to buff that some more. And, uh, yeah, that should do. Ooh, there's something under there, and because I have Freezing Cloud, I can do this. There we go. None of that pesky, oh, I can't kill a plant with a spell because it's too complicated. Or, I have to hack at this with my sword for half an hour before it finally breaks. Now, fuck that shit, just ice it. Okay, so far so good, but I'm getting hungry again. God, I would like an animate skeleton. That'd be nice. No butchery time, lots of extra corpses, and, and uh, dutiful undead servants. Okay, there we go. The, obligat the obligatory l final floor of lair death yaks. Am I standing on a poison cloud? I am good, okay. We'll ice this area so that they're taking heavier damage. They're already going to get poisoned on their way in, and what am I... What corpses are nearby? No, oh, I don't think I can carry a sheep whole. And I can't afford to stay here because I'd be retreating to the unknown, so I have to back off. But with any luck, they'll die before too long. Yep, they both died. Okay, they're down. Oh, god damn it! more calcification dust. Definitely want swiftness on. We're gonna use the same trick we used last time. Stand in poison clouds, attack with something else, and this time we're gonna actually use poison arrow directly on him since I know he's vulnerable to it. Now he's down. Now don't you feel stupid, sir? Uh, let's continue leveling exactly what I am. It's fine, actually. Actually, what I should do is start working towards uh fire magic, since obviously I'm holding out for it at this point. There's no point in pretending that I'm trying to be flexible when I obviously am not. If I was actually being flexible, I would have started training ice magic a long time ago, the moment I decided I was using freezing cloud. And uh, it would be good enough now that my ring of ice uh, would probably be putting my freezing clouds at maximum damage, and I would be already considering how much longer until I get ice storm. Would probably be quite a while longer, but you know, I, I'd be having that conversation. Okay, can't fight you guys in melee, unfortunately. I have to use my swiftness to run from you. But I can shoot you with poison arrow and instantly kill you. That's kind of like fighting you in melee. I don't know what this 
wand is. It is probably a dig. Uh, if it's not a dig, then too bad. And if it is a dig, or if it is a dig, great because this scrolls around. If it's not a dig, too bad. I don't know what it is. I'm sick of carrying it around. Uh, I would have used a recharge on it, but teleportation was obviously a higher priority for me since I knew it was worth recharging. Okay. Oh my god. Shoot, you guys. Should have held out on eating that yak. Okay, so far, this whole side cavern has been one catoblipus slash yakfest. There's another same standby, open with poison cloud on self. This time it actually worked and I didn't uh, have to retreat. Follow up with icing him and let him chase me through my poison. Mix, mix, uh, mix, mix. And then, because he's dumb enough to stand there, I'll shoot him with the poison arrow. Okay, let's see how that yak is doing. Naturally, it's all rotten by now. Oh, and I can't stomach food anyway, so it's kind of not relevant. Okay, end reached. Let's see what my prize is. Nice. We got a poly-resistant ring and a uh, sea invisible. See, invisible is a great utility to have around the house. Um, not because, not something I generally wear, but it's one of those things where when you're getting beat up by an invisible enemy, you can potentially die and there's nothing you can do about it and it sucks. Or you end up using serious resources just to try to get away. Well, that this solves that problem. I am going to retreat from the lair, because mission accomplished. And I see no reason to play this one dangerously. Let's back all the way off to the Orcish Mines, actually. Technically speaking, Orcish Mines is supposed to be a little dangerous, but once you have Cloud Spells and Poison Resistance online... I mean, don't do anything stupid. If you see enemies you can't beat, run, but... I mean, look at this. What are they going to do to me? Seriously. They, they approach me, they die. They don't approach me, I pick them off with Magic Dart, or just walk up to them and hit them with a sword. If I wasn't scared of, uh, yeah, if I wasn't scared of elephants, what chance do orcs have? As with many fantasy settings, orcs are meant to be killed. And here I am tossing around ice blasts and poison blasts like it's nothing. I think the only thing that I consider worth remembering, like really worth remembering, is in Orc you will often find yourself in a situation where you really want to cast a dangerous spell on yourself because enemies are all around you and that's the best place to AoE. So having poison resistance is actually very helpful. Uh, not that it can't be done without it, but yeah, it's very helpful. Where did Joseph go? Oh. Fucker head. Come on, assholes. Come try and kill me. So that I can show you the folly of your ways. Ignore that. Ooh, a new wand. Okay, what does it do? Probably only works on actual targets. Okay, still nothing, eh? Okay, let's try it on a wall. It's a wand of digging. Hooray! me long enough to find one, and it probably doesn't have that many charges left since I wasted three and wants of digging that spawn with more than six charges are pretty rare, but I'll hang on to it because digging can save your life or just be a really nice utility, depending on the situation. Of course, I'm going to have the dig spell soon enough, so it'll be obsolete then. 
Okay, let's go up a floor, and actually, let's check the other up staircases, because this is orc, and areas are almost always disconnected. And you guys are smart enough not to intentionally walk into poison, but I'm smart enough to kill you anyway by pushing you. <laughs> Alright, let's just quickly wrap this shit up. You guys are so gonna die. Anyway, how am I, how's my skilling going, actually? Armor is still not maxed, or, sorry, not maxed. I have no intention of maxing it right now. But I, it isn't even at 8 or 9, which is kind of where I want it to be. Because I'm fairly sure that's where it stops, uh, where leather stops being any factor in your spellcasting. This should be a third staircase. No, just two? Okay, that's cool. There's a new down staircase at least, so we'll try that first. And this is floor three, right? Yeah, okay, good. So we're not on like the, the dangerous final floor. Um, I'm actually tempted to dabble in early elf, just see, to see if I can't get myself some nice elven equipment. Preferably an elven buckler of enchantment. Any enchantment, frankly, is better than what I've got, which is none. And pretty much any buckler is better, because mine is minus one. So, yeah. The first floor of Elf is usually pretty kind of sort of okay, um, though you don't want to obviously go too far into it, and uh, it really pays to have conservation since you're going to get hit with elemental stuff, whether it's by spell or by being shot. Okay, that's a kill. That's a nom nom. And anyway, it, uh, come on, just, ooh, wow, you still smite like a bitch. Actually, that was the spear trap, wasn't it? Yeah, that was the spear trap. Okay, well, I'll heal up. Again, troll leather, freaking awesome for healing. I've never had to go up a staircase to heal the whole time I've been here because, well, the trolls got me. Come on, come on. Okay, that's a clear. Any up staircases that need exploring? Yes, there are. Now, it is admittedly uh, very method uh, very uh, tedious, methodical, but use whatever word you appreciate, the way that I'm going back over every up staircase like this to make sure I fully explored it. There's two reasons. Firstly, this is orc. Orc is, uh, has a lot of gold in it. Gold is a good thing. Uh, I'm going to use magic mapping here just because. Second, and far more important reason, though, is because if I have to beat a hasty retreat, I, ne I never want to have to think, what if... You know, I, I want to be able to think any upstairs case is safe. And it sucks when I can't make that assumption because I've never been down that upstairs case before. Um, so... That's what makes it worth it to my mind to explore every staircase. Actually, can I shoot you with a poison arrow from here? Yes, I can. Missed. Damn it. Uh, let's go see invisible um, in favor of my poly resistance. Okay, we got him. Let's let's go back to visible now. Or poly resistant. Yeah, that poly resist ring is a very good ring for where I am in the game. I'm gonna drop it almost certainly later on, because really resistances should come from my armors, uh, or more accurately, there's plenty of wi of I good wi items that give you resist that you can get via your armors and shields, whereas rings can often give you abilities that you can't get any other way, like regen, or uh, teleport control, constant teleport control, etc. I was wrong about poison dart never miss poison arrow never missing. It totally misses from time to time, but uh, it's what I was thinking is that its range is good enough, and with extended Jehumet at additions, good enough that I can almost always hit things with it, as long as they're not my line of sight isn't my line of fire isn't being blocked. Abjuration is a single target spell instead of a multi target spell now, so I no longer care about it. Um, so I'm holding out for better. And the rest of these spells, if you'll notice, do not 
summon... Well, actually, let me pull up the correct book. The rest of these spells, except shadow creatures, do not summon swarms. <clears throat> swarms are what I want because they tank damage, so I'm going to drop summonings altogether. If I actually end up memorizing anything, it's probably going to be uh, either summon small mammals or scorpions. Small mammals you can get like two or three at a time. Scorpions you get much more, and it works off of poison, which I obviously have fairly trained since, well, poison arrow, poison cloud. You gotta love it. That one gas cloud I threw down killed multiple extra targets. Uh, what's the best way to kill a smoke demon? Let's just do that. He's a summon, so he either walks through ice or times out. Either way, I don't have to deal with him. Let's just throw a bunch of gas at everything. Gas in the orcish mines. And I'm kind of playing this pretty quickly, because my goal is to try and get through both of these before my time runs out, and I'm pretty close. Both this is in finishing Lair and then doing Orc. And I'm pretty close to the limit of my time, so I don't want to take too long. But yeah, uh, as you can see, knocking out the Orcs has been pretty straightforward business here, just shooting them. I've actually been using Poison Arrow against these guys instead of Magic Dart, because my hunger on Poison Arrow... Well, let's put it this way. Remember when I was kind of thinking my, my hunger on Mephitic Cloud is now manageable? Back in the early game? Yeah, that's how low my hunger is on on uh, Poison Arrow now. Mephitic Cloud levels. Uh, ice. Oh, crap. He summoned an Iron Demon. I'm just going to run. And once I have some decent distance, I will gas the way. And hopefully he will not try too hard to follow, but if he does, he shouldn't make it, because he's already been iced. Gas can't be helpful. You know what? This is a good opportunity to kill him with a high-level spell and then bail, because these guys can screw shit up for me. I can't go up the staircase, because... See that star? I haven't been there. Maybe it's even worse. This one I have been down. Uh, let's go ahead and eat a honeycomb just to take the edge off the hunger and try a different staircase. The reason I try a different staircase there is so that one more staircase enters my list of approved exits. Okay. Come on, find me an enemy to blast. Poison arrow. Actually, you I'll gas because I don't know what else is there that will be following in your wake, and I would like it to die on its way to your wake, as it were. Ah, come on, freeze, idiots. Ah, poison arrow, poison arrow, poison arrow. Cost a lot of mana, but obviously it's not a concern for me. Okay, let's see what loot we got here. Nothing of note. Ooh, interesting stuff. Uh, Amulet of the Gormond is always fun, but far from required, or even long-term useful, since I'm going to have an excess of permafood, as you've seen. Uh, magical power I own, sustenance, protection of fire, resist, resist mutation is a long-term investment. I don't generally get mutated at these early stages of the game, so let's give that a pass. I'm going to buy a potion of mutation just so I have it identified. Once I know what that potion looks like, I'm no longer worried about randomly quaffing potions I find, because the worst they can do is give me temporary rot or stat jet degen at this point, and I have enough healing potions that I can deal with that. None of these interest me, and what other potions were there? I wasn't paying enough attention. Blood, resistance, confusion, mutation, levitation. Yeah, okay, fuck all this shit. I'm good. Okay, so no loot that I want to buy. Um, I'm actually pretty close to leaving Orc with nothing more than uh, a little bit more experience and uh, a stack of cash to show for it. Oh crap, it's Arolka. She can banish you to the Abyss, so she's totally worth going full out for broke on. Unfortunately, I've been going full out for broke for a while, so my mana is low. I'm going to back off, get up a couple imps. Full mana, now we take them on. It's the first time I've had to do a full retreat in a long time. Uh, just 
blow you to pieces. Yeah, so part of the luxury of Vehomet, he cheapens all your, well, not cheapens, he makes all of your expensive spells, meaning five mana or more, one mana cheaper, which means to cast two six mana poison arrows in a row costs me only ten mana. Further, if I kill things, I usually get a mana refund. So if I get one mana back for killing something with a magic, with a single poison arrow, we're talking about, what, four mana net cost? And if I throw up a poison cloud for five mana, and then it kills two things, or three things, as often happens, well, then that's why my mana keeps regenerating so fast. That's why I haven't had to retreat in general. But unlike Sith Muna, whose, whose shtick is the opposite direction, I may not be constantly supplying you, but if ever you have a need for more mana on demand, I can give you a ton of it. Yeah, Sith Muna doesn't... Uh, uh, Vehomet doesn't do that. You gotta ration your resources fairly... fairly well. Or have a safe escape route. Alright. Uh, clear, clear, clear. Ultimately, the question of which god to play boils down to his preference and style and what you're in the mood for. But, uh, I will say this. If, if you want to run a post-post endgame, like, super late character, Vehomet ends up being better because all Sif Muna does for you is makes you do spells well, but uh, S Vehumet will make your spells better. Okay, new question. Oh no, I still don't have any fire spells. Not a question, uh, we're good. Let's go to Elf. Actually, I'm gonna call it here. That's anyway all the time I should spend. Or clear, layer clear, that's not a bad start. Unfortunately for me, no real items worth noting I've gotten here. Um, I did get that new ring from the lair, which was nice, and I got a few more Vehomet drops. Next up will be the Grand Grimoire, I think, so I'll have top-level necromancy spells for summoning. Armor is almost done cooking, and I started work on fire. So that's that. Yep, not much else to say. Uh, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.